So good evening once again, everyone. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. You know, sometimes, it's particularly when it gets nice outside in the summer, I understand it's pretty wet in Texas, but in places, but we start getting into the summer, it, it's kind of difficult sometimes to, to come to these uh, webinars, and I understand that. Hey, Albert, how you doing? So tonight I wanted to talk about some concepts of simplifying your trading. And it's it's one of the things that um, is near and dear to me because I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it wasn't until I started simplifying my trading that I started to make money in the market. And um, I think it's one of those things that you can do yourself a major favor in your trading if you simplify things. So what does that mean, simplify your trading? Well, I'm gonna just drop this slide. There's not gonna be any other slides. Let's talk a little bit about the complexity that we bring into our trading all of the time. How many of you have ever done a review of indicators? Here's a list of the indicators in T21, or I mean in TC2000, okay? And you can bring in pretty much any indicator, right, any custom indicator that you want into um, most programs. If you look at Thinkorswim, the indicator list is vast. As a matter of fact, I help program some of those indicators, okay? Now here's the thing they don't like to tell you or don't want most people to even think about in these indicators. If you learn how most of these indicators are calculated, guess what? They're calculated on the same criteria. Almost all of them are based on price, time, and volume. They just put a little different twist on it, a little bit of different math on it or they'll combine a couple to try and make it look cool or whatever, but they're almost all based on price, time, and volume. There's not too much else for inputs that you can put in to a stock chart than those three things. Now, how many in here would, would say you have gone down a rabbit hole as far as indicators? You know, that is a problem, Rickster. Yeah, they haven't been able to figure that one out. Calculate future time and price, yeah. I know, it stinks, right? Well, a lot of traders have gone down this rabbit hole and I wanna show you that just because I don't use too many indicators, doesn't mean I don't know how to use them. Um, I wanna show you some of my past charts. These are charts that I used all the time. Now I can tell you what everything in here means, what it's intended to do, why I put them together like this, what these patterns are meant to show me. But what about this has anything to do with really looking at what price action is doing? Isn't this trying to trade indicator rather than to trade the price of the chart? And has anybody ever in, in here ever been had, had an indicator send you a check and paid you money because you could read the indicator. Right? That's not the case. And this is just one of the many charts that I used to use to try and successfully trade. Okay? I want you to look right here. These here are me learning enough about indicators that I actually wrote my own custom indicators. Now having all of that knowledge, you would think that I must be pretty much rich if I can do all of that with indicators, that this just made me bucket loads of money. Um, no, it didn't. How about this set of indicators? Maybe this was gonna do it. 
This was going to get me to the promised land. Well, no, that didn't do it. Um, how about this group? By the way, guys, these were my standard ch charts. Um, I actually had them programmed in on, under each F key. I had 13 of these. 13 of these that I would have to check and verify to determine whether a trade was a trade. So the fact that I talk about this stuff, that I understand, I understand indicators. I understand how easy it is to go down a rabbit hole. Okay. <clears throat> I, could, I could spend a day telling you what all of this means and why I put it together. Okay. But I can also tell you this. With all of this knowledge, with all of this ability to do all of these things with indicators, it didn't make me any money. So what's the answer then? Well, I started thinking about not only indicators and the different charts and the methods of being able to adjust them or exaggerate them to make them show me something, how about the different strategies? How many of you have experimented or would like to be proficient at day trading, swing trading, scalping, position trading, value investing, options trading, forex options, pairs trading? Or how about just all of the fancy strategy names that are out there? The things that come in your emails all the time. Oh my gosh, you've got to use this thing. This is the coolest thing since uh, you know trading has ever been invented. This is the cool, you got to have this. And I'm as much a fault of that as anyone else. You guys have probably seen my videos about pop out of the box. Right? You've heard us talk about PBOs and rounded bottom breakouts and blue ice failures and all of those kind of things that attract people to a specific trade or idea. But here's the problem. The problem most people never get to is they never decide what kind of a trader they want to be and they don't specialize in anything. You know, when you build a house nowadays, would you, would you hire one single contractor, one person, and expect him to build your house from, you know, cutting the, cutting the hole in the ground and all the way through to handing you the keys? Anybody, anybody build any houses like that anymore? It doesn't happen anymore because it's not efficient. You don't get as good a quality of work because everyone specializes into a specific trade, a specific portion of the project. You're more efficient, you're faster, the quality of work's better. So why don't we think about that kind of stuff when it comes to our trading? How many of you would agree you're trying to be the master of everything? You want to master every pattern. You want to master every indicator. You want to master every time frame. How many of you right now would admit to the fact that you've kind of felt like you've been running in circles and kind of, should I even say, chasing your tail a little bit? Frustrated? Because about every 10 minutes in the trading world, something pops up into your email and it's that new shiny object that gets you distracted going a whole nother direction. You're constantly changing things up. Now for me, this was hard to overcome because I spent so much time and energy and money learning all of these different things, being able to write programs, write the code to do whatever it is I wanted to do with an indicator. That it was difficult for me to knock that chip off my shoulder 
and realize that all of that knowledge and all of that information wasn't making me money. Okay? And it was only when I started to become very, very simple in my trading that things started to change, that I started to get better results. Okay? Type a Y in here. If you want to you want to be a good day trader, you want to be a good swing trader, and you want to be a good position trader all at the same time. Nobody? Yeah. Let me ask you guys, Johnny. I'm not sure. Wyan, is that how you pronounce that name? Um are you frustrated? Most of the time, because you're not making very good money in the market. You find yourself struggling. As a matter of fact, it, trading is nothing like what you thought it was going to be, right? Because what it is, it's, it's turned you, you may be successful in other things that you do, but it's fragmenting you in two different, too many different directions. You're trying to be the jack of all trades, and you're mastering none of them. And you know, I took that stuff to heart and it was hard. I had to go through and prove to myself, I'm a data guy. I had to prove to myself that these indicators weren't making me any money. I mean, if those indicators of having that knowledge was vital to me making money, I should have been rich, but I wasn't. My account wasn't growing. So what was the problem? I was overcomplicating everything. How many of you guys have ever been in trouble or confused when you're trying to put on a trade and you're trying to compare too many different indicators against too many different time frames? The only thing you come up with is a whole bunch of contradictions. Now you can't even do anything. You're frozen. Can't trade. Not only that, but how many of you would say that you've missed Great trades, they're all around us. Great trades all around you. Trying to confirm all of these different things against each other. Trying to be the perfect trader. Well, what I want to tell you is, not shouldn't be a very big surprise, but there is no perfect trading system out there. Okay? There is no perfect, perfect strategy out there okay there's a million different ways to make money in the market I know sucks doesn't it if I could just say no you do this every single time and it'll always make you money that's what we all want right we want it to be easy but let's think about that for a second the way the market is established, just by its very nature, it's a zero-sum game, right? We have a trader here, and we have a trader here. One has to be a seller. One has to be a buyer, where there is no market, correct? There can't be a buyer without a seller. And isn't it funny that both of these people, both at the same time, believe they're right? Correct? That's how the market works. And that's why it's so frustrating. How many of you guys have ever been out on a golf course and your first initial time out on the golf course where you really didn't care what happened or whatever. You just went out there and you swung and you hit the ball and, hey, it wasn't a great shot, but it was pretty good. And then later on, as you worked at it and worked at it and took lessons and thought about it and watched videos, your game got progressively worse. You started overthinking it, right? How many of you would agree that 
the the game of trading is as much mental as it is anything else. Would you guys agree with that? Because I'm here to tell you that the number one enemy to your trading is not the market. It's you. All of the emotion that we bring to the market hurts us as traders. Okay. Eat off in the ball went backwards. I, I know that feeling, man. <laughs> I know that feeling. But what we have to do as traders is we need to, oh, I believe you, I believe you. We need to simplify what we're doing in our trading. And let me explain that for just a second. What I finally learned is after all of this, and I'm, and I'm talking 10 years of frustration, 10 years, I'm just stubborn enough that I wasn't gonna quit, Okay, thinking it just had to be that next step. I just needed to open that one more door. I just needed to learn this one more indicator that was going to solve the problem. Okay. But what I found out was completely the opposite of that. What I found out that during this time when I was always frustrated, always scrambling for the next best thing, always chasing the next shiny object, there were trends around me everywhere. Anybody ever been frustrated with that? Market's been going up and up and up and up and I'm losing money. How can that be? How can that be that there's all of these trending stocks all around me? So much is going up, but I'm losing money. Well, a lot of that has to do, a lot of that has to do with the emotion we bring to our trading and the complexity that we put to our trading. You know, I get accused of that a lot, Clint, that I'm what that, gee, you're talking about me. But honestly, I'm talking about me. Me. I went through this. I went through this, and it's an ugly feeling, too, going through this. It's, it's horrible. It's like I mentioned today in, in the trading room that it's kind of like being in perpetual purgatory. And another person said, no, it's actually more like hell. <laughs> And I agree, right? It's a killer. You hate your life. You hate what you're trying to do. It's just driving you crazy, but you, you got just enough stubbornness in it that you won't give it up. And isn't it true once you've learned something new, you apply that to your trading and you go, okay, now wait a minute. This has to, this has to be just right for this to be a trade. And the more of those things that you add, the worse your trading becomes. What I started doing is walking all of that stuff backward. This is what I call a naked chart. The only reason volume and bop are on here is I had them on my charts for years and they kind of truncate the price action of the chart. Other than that, I don't use any indicators on my chart. White background black and white candles. And if you guys think that colorful charts are the great thing, go out and do a little research. You're gonna find that your eyes are capable of seeing black and white way better than anything else. I fought that for years and years and years. My mentor told me that from day one. When I, first class I ever took, day one, told me that. For 10 years I fought it. I was wrong, absolutely wrong. I started walking back all of that stuff and saying, how can I be missing trends? How can I look at a chart like this and miss these moves? 
how can I look at long-term trends and have never found a way into that trend? How many of you guys have ever said to yourself, well, it's gone up so much now, it has to come down? That was a famous one of mine. It's gone up so far now, it has to come down. No. We've only been in an uptrend for how many years now? It's the longest bull run in history. So what I started to do is simplify my trading. I boiled it down to a basic set of rules and I boiled it down to a couple of patterns that I recognize in the market that repeat themselves. Okay. Now I do this all the time in right way options when I'm showing folks stuff. So if you've seen this a thousand times, I apologize. Um, but I, I want to display this one more time. Well, one more time today. <laughs> I'm so passionate about this because this saved my trading. I'm, I came up with this idea because I was looking around me, I saw all of these trends and I said, how in the world could I be not making money in this market when things are trending everywhere? All around me there were trends and I wasn't making any money, I was losing money. And I finally came up with this thought, now wait a minute, there could be no easier way to make money in the market than to find a trending chart and just wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, finding the trending chart's easy. Anybody can find a trending chart. In fact, do you need any indicators to tell you that WFC has been trending? Do you need anything to tell you it's trending? Anything? Clearly, obviously, trending. Yeah, just your eyes. Okay, just your eyes. Now, Barry said something important there, just price. When it comes to trading, how do we make money? Is it when an indicator moves? Nope. We make money in the market when price moves. And yet we spend so little of our trading time actually analyzing price and waste most of our time analyzing indicators, trying to write scans to pinpoint the three trades today that are going to make me money. Isn't that the truth? Anyone here want to admit that you've wasted years trying to write the perfect scan? Now let's think about it guys, if it were that easy, would there be any money to be made in the market? Remember, there's one winner, one loser, every trade. It's a zero sum game. If something was meant to work all of the time, how long would it work? About as long as it took for a few people to understand this is working really well, everybody jumps over on there and then it no longer works. Okay, but here's what we, here's, here's the hope, okay, here's the hope. Today, right now, about 87% of the market, 87% of the money in the market belongs to institutions. The 401k plans, the mutual funds, all of those different things. That's about 87% of all the money in the market. Now think about most institutions. Now, of course, there's high frequency trading firms and things like that in there as well. But of the majority of that money, how much of that money moves in and out daily? Do institutions throw money back and forth in and out of these positions all the time? Nope. Nope. In fact, there's laws against that. It's called churning. They're not allowed to do it. Okay. 
the reason trends exist is because institutions are supporting the stock. Now, if an institution is supporting a stock, it's not going to be a short-lived trade, is it? It's going to be over a period of time. That's going to grow and grow until they all of a sudden feel that there's no more value left in it. They'll ride that horse until it's dead. Okay? Well, if we can identify the trend, then all we need to do is look for a method to enter at the next buy opportunity. So as we look at trends, when you, when you think about all the different price patterns and things that you've seen in the market, what's the most common price pattern of the market overall? Isn't it the peak and valley pattern? Uptrends and downtrends, that's a peak and valley pattern, right? The most common trend in the market, most common price pattern in the market. So when I started backing things up, all I wanted to do was find the simplest, easiest patterns in the market that I could exploit the price action. And I use that word, exploit the price action. I'm not marrying a stock. I'm exploiting the move for a quick game. The trade. If I'm doing swing trading, I'm exploiting the price action. I want to look for those low risk entry positions in these patterns. Okay. There's one other pattern in here that I think is pretty prevalent in the market. And that is a stock consolidation. Right? If you go back and you measure all of the price action of the market, you'll find that stocks spend more time going sideways than they actually do going up. Just a few days here, a few days there going up. Most of the time, most of their price action is sideways. Okay. So if we think about two simple patterns, if we have a stock that's in a trend, we see a trend, we look for the next entry into that trade. The two entries I use are pretty simple. They're as basic as they get. It's the pullback to trend and support. And I even wait for the buyers to show up. I don't try to anticipate the trade or predict where it's going to turn. I literally make them show me that they're coming into the trade. And you can ask anyone here in Right Way Options. Guys, do, except those two patterns, do you guys ever see me do much of anything else? It's those two patterns. I repeat the same thing over and over and over and over. Now, I have worked really, really hard to try and be the very best. We call this a um, actually, Rick gave this a name, a PBO, pullback opportunity. Okay. I've worked very hard to be one of the best traders I can be at the pullback opportunity or the consolidation, what we call the pop out of the box. I work really hard at those two things. And they all correlate. And what I mean by correlate is the closer we come to the trend before the stock moves, the better the trade is. If I show you a trend where the stock has moved sharply away from the trend, like right here, how many of you have ever been caught in this? It moves up big, goes like this, pops a candle, you jump on that trade, get immediately stopped out as it moves back to trend. Right? We have to have trend. The best trades in the market are stocks that are moving over toward trend and they have a price support level below. 
So the closer and closer this comes to trend, the better this trade becomes, the better opportunity, the easier, easier it is to see and to respond to. And when I see charts like this, all I do is I place a price alert. Place a price alert on that chart. I see the pattern setting up. I don't know when it's going to occur or even if it will occur. I just set a price alert and wait for that trade. And I repeat that same process over and over again. Okay, take a look at um, MDLZ. MDLZ, we just recently entered in right way options. Everyone in, in RWO can confirm this. We entered this right here on this candle right here. Same pattern, right? It's the exact same pattern I just showed. I wait for the trade to show itself. I wait for buyers to show me that they're ready to step in. No prediction here. I don't get involved. As a matter of fact, I would tell you that anybody that goes out there and says, hey, Tesla is going to go to 3,000 is a fool. How about we worry about getting through the next level first? before we worry about grandiose ideas of where the stock is going to go. See, when I started trading silver, everybody knows in right way options, the only thing I worry about is the next level, right? The next level in the trade. Where's the next level? There it is. We move through this. Where's the next level? It's right in here. If we can move on through here, where's the next level? It's out here. That's all I care about. What's the next step? What's the next step? <clears throat> Drawing trend lines and things like that, LS, is actually very easy, but it does take some time and practice. You know, what I usually tell people is go draw up a thousand charts. And I, and I mean that. Go do it. Go draw up a thousand charts and trust me on this, you'll see this trend easily. It's not hard to do. The best way to draw up a trend is to get as many touches to that trend as possible. That shows you the strength of the trend. Okay? All I'm doing, that's right, that's all I do, is follow the trend. I don't predict the, the trend. As a matter of fact, you guys, um, Right Way Options folks, if you're new here, will tell you that anytime I look at a chart, somebody asked me about um, PLTR today. Is PLTR a trade? Guess what I did? The first thing I did is I said, well, let's take a look. What's the trend look like? Does anyone think that that looks like an uptrend? In fact, wouldn't you say that is exactly right at the place where this trend could fail? How many times do we have to fail along a trend line before we believe it's true? Right? So this would be far more likely to be a put setup trade or a short trade than it would be a long trade for me. When does it become a long trade? Really simple, guys. The, an it's, the answer is always really simple. Break the downtrend, prove to hold it as support, and then show me a buy signal. Isn't that just the same pattern I just showed you guys? Every single time, over and over and over, you give me any chart, 
that's been trending and I can find you the downtrends where that pattern will play out over and over and over. RWO will tell you, our members will tell you, I show that pattern over and over and over again. These are the very basic patterns in the chart. Here's where my big mistakes were coming in, guys. I'm going to go back to this silver chart. How many of you have ever done this? Well, I'm looking at this chart. Yep, I see the trend. The trend is there. Okay. But you know, I can't buy this. I can't buy this in here somewhere because, well, can't you see there's resistance over here? Or how about this resistance right here? There's resistance right here. I can't buy this. Now remember what I said, I want to find the best way to exploit price action. Now think about that. Where's your lowest risk entry? Somebody said about how do I set a stop? Where's the lowest risk entry along this trend? If I can enter as close to price support and trend as possible, I get my lowest risk entry point. Always. What I was doing before is I was always waiting for so much confirmation that the stock was going up that I would invariably catch it at the high point for the pullback or very near the high point. How many of you guys have been right most of the time on your trades? The first day, maybe the second day, it's making money and then boom, it's just crap after that. You're buying nearer resistance than you are support. Buy your stocks at or near price support. You take less risk on the trade and you'll have a higher winning percentage, particularly if you get those trades close to trend and close to support. There's a trade back here. I talked about this a few times, but the only reason I talk about this is because it was so easy to see. NIO, this was a very volatile stock. Okay. These are price alerts where I was waiting for the trade. I ended up actually entering this trade, and everyone in Right Way Options will tell you, I entered that trade on that candle when it popped up through there. Now people would say, now wait a minute, you didn't wait for the end of the day, you just you, you bought that candle when it broke the alert? And the answer to that is yes. I broke that right there because my stop loss is right underneath this tight price consolidation. Notice I had trend, and I had price support of this platform right there. If this stock turned around and failed here, I'd lose money, but I wasn't going to lose very much, was I? So I buy those stocks at or near price support and trend. We had to wait a few days for this to move. My next entry into this trade was right here. That candle right there. Anyone here in RWO can confirm that, right? Type a Y, confirm that. I made $10,000 on those two entries. Now let me ask you guys, how many of these kind of trades do you need to have over the course of a month to make a lot of money? No, I have not. Those are my last two trades on NIO. NIO right now is testing price resistance in a downtrend. I trade stocks that are trending with the direction of the market. I don't counter trend trade. Okay. So the first part of being successful in trading, in my opinion, is to simplify it. Did I need any indicators to show me these entry points? 
Nope, I didn't do a study of volume. I didn't do a study of stochastics, MACD, nothing. I used price action to make these trades. Nothing more, nothing less. Price action. Okay. Now this price action works just the same on a daily chart as it does longer term charts. I'm not still holding KHC, but everyone in right way options knows that we entered this trade. This is a weekly chart right here. We entered this trade right over here. Break the downtrend right here. We made a bucket load of capital on that. We did the same thing on a weekly trade in Altria. The entry was right here. There's that downtrend. There's that nice tight consolidation. Right here is the entry candle. Stop loss right underneath it. We made a bucket load of money on that one. Okay. Uh, if you don't see a screen clint, you're going to have to refresh the room. Um, at the top of the room, there is over on the right hand side, there's a little double arrow thing. Refresh. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, uh, something's blocking you. You may even have to um, um, shut off your browser completely and come back in. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's a daily chart. It doesn't matter. If it's a weekly chart, it doesn't matter if it's an intraday chart. You can take any intraday chart, utilize these same patterns. If I go to a 15 minute trade, look at the entry that was right here. There's the rally, break of the downtrend, the consolidation, there's your entry into a winning trade. You can take any chart and do that over and over and over again. Now, if you want to trade short, it's the same thing. Just reverse those. We're looking for that next entry into the short. You can do the same thing over and over and over. Now, let's talk about some rules. How many of you would agree that you've had winning trades in your account but you let it turn into a loser trying to get more money. Okay, greed hurts a lot of people in training. Is there anyone in here that would say, hey, I'm trading a Somewhere around a $20,000 account. Anybody in here got a $20,000 account? Trade about $20,000. Okay. Alyssa, Vin, Frank. If you got a 20% return on this account, Would that be like the biggest return you've ever had on a yearly basis? 20% return. At the end of the year, you made 20% in your account. Wouldn't that, would, would that be a good return for you? Most people would say, well, yeah, I've been losing money. So yeah, that'd be pretty good, right? Okay, so here's a few things to think about. If you have a $20,000 account, and we're trying to make 20% on that account, we need to try and make $4,000, right? $4,000 over the course of a year will give us 20% return, correct? So that means we need to make $333 a month
or $83 a week. How many of you guys had more than $83 in winning trades but didn't take it? Why? Because we always want more, right? I'm not here to trade for $83. Are you kidding me? How many of you think that you could find two trades over the course of a week that could make you 40 bucks a piece or 50 bucks a piece? Wouldn't be all that hard, right? All we've got to do is look for those simple price patterns with low risk entries and take those trades. Get in and get out. Take the money. Like Mike, that's right. We have a trader in the room, um, good friend of mine, it's, he just he's a neighbor, really. Um, in my neck of the woods, it's a neighbor, but um, that started with a $20,000 account. In his first year, he made a 65% return. Over the course of the entire year, his average winning trade was $120. He averaged $120 a trade and made a 65% return in his $20,000 account. Think about that, guys. How much money have you let blow right, right across in front of you in the market and you just chose not to pick it up. I'm guessing quite a bit, right? We've got to stop and think about what our plan is. So first part of your plan is knowing what you're trying to achieve. See, if we're going from, if we know where we're going, if we have a point A and we want to go to point B, we need a plan to get there. Now let me ask you this question. If we never take those profits when we're supposed to, are we ever going to reach our goal? If we don't take stop losses when we're supposed to, are we ever going to reach our goal? not going to happen unless it's luck. Okay, we have to have a plan as to what we're doing. How are we going to go from here to here? Now you can do better than this. You can say, like Mike did, shot for 20%, made 65%. The market was just giving up money and he just kept going after it. But see, it works for him because he has a plan and he sticks to the plan. By the way, the only thing Mike Peterson does, he trades long calls and long puts. He doesn't do anything else. No spread trades, nothing else. He trades the 3-8 trap, which is those two patterns really that I showed you setting up. He trades the 3-8 trap, long calls, long puts. And he runs an average win-loss ratio of better than 75%. And why? How can he have such a high winning ratio? Because when that option is up 15 to 20%, he's out of there. He doesn't care what happens after that. He made his money. He's gone. Go find the next trade. Well, let's talk about that for a second, LS. How many times have you moved up the stop and then lost money? Isn't it true, particularly in this volatile market, that the very next bar, you could be up $100 in a trade, the very next bar is a black bar, and all of your profit's gone, right? Particularly in options. I mean, it just evaporates like that.
right? Wouldn't you rather have that $100 in your account rather than hoping that it might not be there the next bar, the next day, the next hour? Wouldn't it be better to just put it in your account, now it's mine? Instead of always trying, isn't that the truth? You show me 100 bucks, guys, I want 150. Show me 150, I want 300. Show me 300, I want 1,000. We're all built like that. We all want more. But if we don't set a plan to take profits, trust me on this, guys, you're not going to get there. You can't grow your plan. You can't grow your account without taking profits. One of the things that I say over and over and over again, and it sounds kind of stupid to say, but it's an aha moment for a lot of people. It's impossible to be a consistently profitable trader unless you get comfortable with taking profits consistently. Okay. L, you can't tell me that you haven't been in a trade that you were up, you had a stop loss, and the next day the stock gapped below your stop and all your money's gone. If you trade options, just the implied volatility change on the very next bar can take the money away. How many of you guys have ever had a stock that gaps up in the morning you're in the trade, the stock, you're in here, the stock gaps up in the morning, and you spend the whole day, the whole day watching this chart, hoping that you can get back the money that you could have taken if you just took it right at the open. Closed the trade, walked away. Everyone in right-way options knows if I'm in a trade and the stock gaps in my direction, I almost always immediately close the trade. The market just gave me a gift. I'm going to take it. After that, it doesn't matter. I put money in my account. That's my job. Okay. That's correct. Follow the trend as long as the trend exists. Follow the trend. You can always get back into a trade. Okay, take a look at a stock like SQ. Here's a weekly chart. How many opportunities were there to make money in this chart? Over and over and over and over and over and over again. This chart gave people money. Okay. Um, see, yes, we do. We talk, um, I do both longer term. And honestly, I'm doing a little bit more longer term right now than I am the really quick stuff because the market's so volatile. We're whipping so many points back and forth. The really quick stuff can be really challenging because it can change just boom. Think about it. This is just kind of funny that I'm saying this right now. The Dow Jones closed down 81.52 points today. The futures right now show an 81 point gap up in the morning. If you were short and didn't take the profit, it may be gone first thing in the morning in the morning. If you're a stock trader, Bert, or, or, or an option trader, it's going to be a little bit different. Everybody, you know, I started trading with $2,500, guys. 
I just told you about the success of that friend of mine that started with 20. Okay. I have people that I work with, with that work with 10,000 or less. I will tell you that if you have an account smaller than 10,000, it can be done, but it's hard. Okay, you really have to work at it really hard to grow a, a small account. And the reason is, is because you just, you just can't take much of a loss, right? You gotta be pretty quick on that trigger to take those profits, okay? Let's talk about a couple other rules, stop losses. Why am I so picky about the patterns that I trade? Take a look at like UNH today. UNH is setting up a possible trade. There's my chart pattern. Okay, notice how many patterns that trade has set up all the way up. Over and over and over, same trend, same pattern. You can, you can grow a small account, but oftentimes you have to risk more than you really are comfortable with and you gotta be really disciplined about taking profits. Or you start learning strategies like credit spreads that don't require you to take large, um, large risk in the trades, okay? But you still have to be very dedicated to taking profits. And realizing that in a in a five thousand dollar account, what's a twenty percent return on five thousand dollars over the course of the year? Break that down and go all the way down to what you need to make every week to make your twenty percent return, and that's that's not very much. Okay, you don't have to make a whole lot to make that return happen, but you got to be dedicated to it. Okay. The other thing that you can do with that smaller account is just pick up some trending ETFs, buy small positions in them, and let them grow. Okay, this is something we did. Here, let me show you guys this. I put this together, okay? We did this as a group with the Right Way Options group. We bought every single one of these ETFs on 4-1, April 1st of 2020. Okay, notice that we bought 43 shares, 19 shares, 13 shares. We only used $8,700. That's the current profit in that portfolio, $6,000. And we've done nothing to this since then. Not one thing. Haven't changed a thing. Anyone in RWO could verify that for me. Type a Y. We went through this process together. I didn't even steer this. I didn't steer this to these, these ETFs. We did this as a group, and as a group, we selected the allocation. And there's the results. Okay, so a small account, you can do this, but it may require a little bit more patience where you pick those trades and just let that account work. Let those trades work, okay? Now I would tell you right now is probably not a good time to start that because I think the market is closer to a top than anything else. We need a sell off or a correction to really begin that again in the market, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. But just note that that's all we did. We didn't do anything else. These are all stocks, right? We just bought the stocks. We didn't buy options, we bought stock. These are the entry prices, these are the current prices, okay? Their current prices, these are the entry prices on 4-1. And I did this in front of everyone. This isn't magic stuff. This is real simple trading. We've not changed a single thing. And by the way, these pay dividends and I haven't included the dividends in this return. 
This was buying 43 shares, 19 shares, 13 shares. And letting that portfolio grow. Not a single change to this. Okay. 10,000, we only used we only used 8,700 of it. We left $1,300 in the account because that's realistic to have a little bit of cash left in the account to be utilizing for any kind of adjustments. You know, if you wanted to sell calls against it or do any hedging or anything like that in the trade, it's just letting the, the account work. Okay, so that's definitely possible to do. If you have a small account, that's another method of doing it. It's just finding a good allocation to a few um, um, easy trades like that and just let the trade grow. Okay. So what about stop losses? This is kind of an expensive stock. I don't care what price the stock is, but it's the same thing. Price action here is telling us in this tight consolidation, there's no buyers above this area. There's no sellers below this area. That gives me a very tight range. In fact, wouldn't you guys say that if this stock fell below here, we no longer want that stock, right? Doesn't matter if this is a $400 stock or a $4 stock. Same thing is true, right? Price fell below that, we don't want it. So when I set stop losses, I'm always looking for low risk entries. That's that stock that gives me a low risk entry on the trade where I can stop out quick. If I'm wrong, I want to be wrong and I want to be wrong and be out. I don't want to argue with the market, I just want to be out. So notice these patterns right here, same thing. Place a price alert right here. You're in the trade right in here, your stop loss is right here around this red line. Low risk entry on the trade. Easy trade to get your goal. Okay, not that hard, right? Pretty simple. What about this one right in here? Low risk entry into the trade. What about this one over here? Low risk entry into the trade. Starting coming up out of this bottom right there. There's your entry. Your stop loss is right underneath there. Low risk entry into the trade. Just repeat it over and over and over and over and over. Get your goal, wait for the next entry into the trade. And repeat it over and over and over and over. Now, a couple things are going to happen when you do that, guys. You guys think that I get that I'm pretty good after 20 years of following the same patterns and doing the same basic patterns over and over and over. I have specialized in those two patterns. I consider myself to be one of the best at those two patterns. Anything else in the market I could give her, I, I don't care. Just about said something I didn't want to say. <laughs> I could care less. I don't care. I don't care if a stock is zooming up. If it never gave me a pattern, don't care. That's not my trade. I know who I am as a trader and I just repeat the same thing over and over and over. We've got some RWO folks here and I just wanted to, I want to show this for a second. This is a, this is a futures chart. Okay. The other day, did I or did I not guys tra tra trade the same pattern in the futures? And what was the number that I made? What did I make in just a few minutes? 180 bucks? Yeah. The exact same pattern. And this is a 333 tick chart. A very fast chart. Look at the patterns, guys. Break the downtrend. Hold it as support. Look for your entry into the trade. Low risk entry. Winner. Same pattern, same trade, different time frame. So, to simplify your trading, guys, I honestly mean get simple in your trading. 
specialize in something. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to use those two patterns. The pattern that you see the easiest when you look at a chart, that's the one that you want to study and become the very best at that pattern as you can. I can tell you this, if you have one good quality pattern that repeats itself over and over in the market, you can be a millionaire. Because all we have to do is exploit that same price pattern over and over and over. Right? Specialize in something. Simplify your trading. Here's the other thing. Here's the good news in all of this, guys. All of that frustration, all of that hassle, all of that negative feeling that you feel right now, it all goes away and you actually start to enjoy your trading because it's just repeating the same process over and over and over again. Just get simple in your trading. Get focused on what you want to do. Think about it, guys. When you look at a trade, if you know what your goal is, I'm trying to make 100 bucks a week, doesn't that keep you focused on what my job is? And by the way, I write this stuff down every single week in my trade log. I write down what I'm trying to achieve annually, what I'm trying to achieve monthly, what I'm trying to achieve weekly. I write down what my risk tolerance is per trade. Every single week, I do that on Sunday as I'm preparing for my week ahead. I know my numbers. I know who I am as a trader. And I just continue to repeat the same process over and over and over. And as my account has grown, guys, the trades are the same. I just grow the size of the trade. That's all I do. That's all I've done is just grow the size of the trade. Scale it up. That's right. Um, I would say probably just the opposite of that, see? In general, is it easier to make mo more money in lower price stocks? And I would say no. Okay, because the lower price stocks have bigger percentage moves. Right? You can have a lower price stock and in one candle have a 20% move in the candle. Well, what if it goes the other way? Lower price stocks have bigger percentage moves. So if you're trading in those really little tiny guys, okay, you can find it. If you've been doing that for a while, see, would you kind of, would you agree that your account's kind of being chopped to pieces? That back and forth and those big percentage swings can be very, very challenging. Okay, so those little tiny guys are sometimes not the better trades. The other thing, a, a clue for you guys, is if, they're, if the stock is in the news all the time, avoid it like, a, like the plague. If it's in the news all the time, avoid it. How many times have you, in the lately guys, have you heard about Hershey chocolate being in the news. Do you think that was an easy trade to make right there? Not in the news. Boy, it, it doesn't come even. Tesla's in the news all the time. Bitcoin's in the news all the time. Amazon, Apple, they're in the news all the time. They're really hard to trade. Take something like Hershey. If you Even if you put that on a longer term chart, how hard was that easy to trade? That's easy trading. I prefer the non-newsy stocks, stocks that aren't in the news all the time. Give me a Hershey, give me a KHC. Look at that trend. Give me an Altria. Give me a Philip Morris. 
those are the trades I want. Give me a Colgate Palm Olive. Okay, those kind of trades, anything in the financials, take a look at XLF. How hard is that? Look for the very simple, concise price action charts. Avoid the newsy stocks. Avoid those, think about it. If a stock has really high implied volatility, are your odds better or less of getting the direction right? Yeah, less. The higher the volatility is, the less chance you're gonna get the direction right. I don't use a percentage risk for my stop loss, Gary. I use a dollar amount. I don't know about you, but all of my bills come to me in dollars. I can't just pay a percentage. So I have to control my dollar amount risk, and we all have a number. Think about it, Gary. If you use a percentage and you trade a stock like UNH, a 5% loss in this is going to be way different than a 5% loss in this. You have to know the dollar amount. How much can you risk before it becomes too much pain? Never risk more than your risk tolerance for a trade. Okay? So what that means is I find trades all the time that are setting up but the risk to my stop loss is too large, so I don't take those trades. Okay. Now, LMT, I think I've heard some news here recently on LMT. When was the last time you saw CNBC cover anything about 3M? I, I mean, honestly. Um, no, not necessarily. I would say the majority, the majority of my entry trades are going to be in the morning time frame. Not all of them, but the majority are. And um, probably on the early side of the week. Okay. Because I tend to be a seller. I tend to be a profit taker heading into the weekend. I don't like buying stocks on a Friday. I tend to be more of a profit taker going into the week, a weekend. My job as a trader is to make money. Right. If you want to be a full-time trader, you've got to figure out a way that you can cover what you need to cover month over month. Now, I've been doing this for more than 15 years. I know what I have to make. My bills come every month, right? I've taken care of my family. I've put, put two kids through college trading. How did I do that? Because I had a plan, and I followed my plan. This is what I need to do. And it's not about percentages, it's about the dollar amounts that I have to make to pay my bills. To do the things, to live the lifestyle I want to live. Uh, Greg, no, rarely do I use a trend line for my alerts. I will put an alert sometimes on a trend line to notify me when a stock is maybe breaking a downtrend. Okay, but rarely do I use them as a method of alerting to a trade. Because usually a trend line alert is going to be a reversal from either a downtrend to an uptrend, correct? 
it's not going to be a low risk. It's not going to be a support level entry or a um, or a short entry that's near resistance. Okay. Now, if you want to be successful in trading, and this is, I think, ex I am so picky about the trades I take. I think I frustrate the heck out of a lot of people in right way options because I'm picky. See, I know after all of this time, I don't have to have a lot of trades. What I need is a few quality trades. But isn't it true the market opens and we're just rushing, rushing, rushing. We're working really hard to risk our money today when maybe the market isn't good for trading today. So I want quality of trades more than quantity of trades. So if I have to be patient and wait, I will wait. One of the things that I talk about a lot in Right Way Options is I think a lot of people are addicted to the risk. They're addicted to the game. And if they would just get a little bit pickier and a little bit more stringent and be focused more on the quality of trade rather than the quantity of trade, your trading would, would probably almost automatically improve. Now this over here, this trend line is to just show that we're in this little wedging pennant type pattern. For me, there's no trade on 3M unless this breaks out and holds. Every single downtrend is the same. Ask anybody in right way options. I draw that pattern 100 times a day. And why is it not trying to buy this when it first breaks through there? How many times have you guys seen, or how many times have you done this? that you bought this break, okay? And then find out that it can't hold support and it reverses and goes back down. Take the example of IWM here. I said this today, how many, anybody in RWO remember me saying this? I said this in RWO today, when this crossed up through here, and it, so many people were kind of chasing into trades. Why aren't you interested in buying IWM long? I said, well, how many times? How many times has it crossed over the 50-day moving average and proved that it couldn't hold it? Right? All we got to do is look right here. There's one time right here we failed. Cross through, failed. Cross through, failed. Cross through, failed. Cross through, failed. The long trade, guys, is always going to be when we prove that support. It's not that cross up, that big move right in here, that big volatility move that says, oh, this is the trade right here. That's not the trade. That's the hard trade. That's the, that's the white knuckle trade that you're just hoping and praying it holds on because you've got so much risk in that trade. This is my trade right here, low risk, easy win. Here's another one, low risk, easy win, low risk, easy win. Okay. Give you an example of how I take profit. When I reach my goals, I close the trade. Seriously. I, I, Anyone in right-way options confirm that for them? I often sell while the stock is still going up. I take profits. When I hit my goals in my trades, I close the position. If I'm in a trade and the stock gaps up, I almost always just close the trade. Take the money. 
But isn't that true, Val, of all the time? How many times, if you if you record your trades, Val, you're going to find out that if you record those trades, you'd often you would often have been better if you'd have just taken the profit. Okay. I did the same thing when I was selling, when I did the futures trade. I entered the trade and I had my orders to exit immediately after entering the trade. Stock moved, hit those exits, took me out of the trade, I'm out. Trade for your goals. Exit the trades as they're working for you. Don't get greedy. Greed will kill you in the market, particularly in a volatile market like this. How many would say greed has killed you recently? You may even had the direction right, but you stuck with the trade too long and the greed killed it. Profit comes into the position. Know your goals. Take the profit. Anything that happens past that doesn't matter. We were here to make money. If we don't take those profits, we're making a mistake. Okay. So take those profits. Be vigilant about taking profits. And by the way, guys, I'm not perfect at this. I make mistakes just like everyone else does. I've just gotten a lot better at being disciplined to my rules. And that's made me productive and profitable in the market. I don't win every trade. I win about 70% of my trades. That means I have losers. That means I have to control my losers. When the stock moves against me, I close it. Okay? If it breaks my stop loss, no question, no argument, I close it. Because I'm not going to make my goals if I let my losers get very big, right? How many of you guys have ever had five or six winners and had one loser take all that profit away? because you didn't close it. Right? We have to be vigilant every time. When the stock moves against us, when we're wrong, close it. We bought a trade in CLF. CLF moved against me and it hadn't even tripped my stop loss. And I told everybody, you know what, guys, I'm going to close this trade because I feel like I've got a little bit too much long risk in the market. and I don't like the way the market's looking. I closed it early and I immediately got criticized. I'm feeling pretty good that I closed that trade early. I don't wait around. If the trade is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, I want out. I'm not going to fight the market. I'm not going to argue with the market because it's a whole lot easier for me to make my money by finding the trade that is working rather than fighting the trade that's not. Show of hands, how many people have ever turned a short-term swing trade into a long-term hold? trying to prove to the market that you were right on the direction. Okay. When you've got the direction wrong, the easiest answer is just to close the trade. Take the small loss and then go look for a good trade to make that money back because it's easier to do. Don't fight the market, get out. Okay? 
So I hope you guys got something from this tonight. It's really important to me because, and, and it's really personal to me because you can see how simply I trade. I just trade simple charts. I just repeat the same things over and over and over. And that's made me pretty successful at what I do. I'm no, I'm no, I don't consider myself a master of trading or anything, but what I will tell you is I'm pretty much a master at trading a trending chart in a stock that's moving in concise price action and repeating patterns over and over. I'll follow that chart for as long as that baby's paying. And I'll just keep trading it. Okay? Keep your trading simple. I challenge you to simplify your trading. You don't have to like my style. That's perfectly fine. Find your style. And then work to get the very best you can at something simple. Because if you can find a pattern, and I'm going to say this one more time, if you can find a pattern that repeats itself over and over and over in the market and you can identify it, you can be a millionaire. If you have a set of rules and you're picky and you're patient and wait for that pattern to set up. All right. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Thanks for being here. I truly appreciate it. How did I find those setups that I use? Just by studying price. Um, I use a phrase all the time, price is king. I study price action. And there's plenty of videos out there on the YouTube channel. I'm gonna ask you guys a favor. If, if this is, if you've never been to um, Right Way Options YouTube channel, if you guys, you can take all of this information from me, do everything with that, perfect, I love it. But I want you to do me a favor, one favor. I want you to go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Stay in contact with me, okay? I've got over a thousand videos on YouTube. You can learn an awful lot there to improve your trading. I'm, um, I'm always working to simplify my trading, always. So please, if you're here, go over there and subscribe to the channel. I work from a watch list, Clint. I do run a scan. I, I run some scans, but I, I work from a watch list. There's no point in me scanning everything in the market because I'm not going to trade Amazon. How many of you guys, even on options, are going to trade Amazon? Probably not, right? So what's the point in wasting your time with it? Only look at charts. If you're an option trader, make sure they have good open interest. Only look at charts that fit your tolerance for risk, that are in a trend, that are in a price range that you can trade. Everything else is a waste of time. Awesome, Val. I'm looking forward to that, too. Hey, if you buy one, one share of Amazon for a long-term hold, I've got no problem with that. If you're buying it as a stock, yeah, got no problem with it. You can pay, make a pretty nice percentage. You're not going to get rich on that, right? Right. 
actually phyllis yes if you look in the youtube channel let me show you something about youtube that's a lot of people don't know if you go to youtube uh, channel and you come right in here um to the channel and you go to um let's see what am i on that's that's not youtube go to playlist come right over here to tc2000 software I actually go through and show you exactly how I set up my watch list. Look in the descriptions. There's codes for the scans, the things that I do with a watch list. It's all right there. It's free. Gave it away. Okay. So there's over a thousand videos on here. Go take a look at those. And every single morning, and I'll be there'll be one in tomorrow morning, first thing tomorrow morning. There'll be a morning market prep video. And I give stock ideas away every single day. Stocks that could be setting up. Right? Thanks guys. Everyone have a great evening. Thanks for being here. Truly, truly appreciate it. Y'all take care, be safe, and I'll see you guys. Well, I'm back at my desk at 5 a.m. to do the morning marker prep. Take care everyone, have a great one.